Righto, so we're here with Brooksy. We're uh, going to do a butterfly removal on his bike. We've got all the side panels and the seat off, as you can see. And we'll be pulling up the ECU and just lying it out of the way and obviously pull off the bottom half of the air cleaner. We'll clean all around the lip here, make sure no dirt goes in the clean side because he's probably just going to put that back in if he's not going to service it. And then we can get access to the air horn underneath the, the uh, air box there. Okay, so we're looking inside the air box now and you can see this air horn and this mounting lip around here. The air horn's actually rubber and you can actually squeeze that air horn in and withdraw it into the air box. So that's what we'll be doing. We'll get the ECU up out of the way, undo the clamp from it, clean around it and we'll drag the air horn back into here and that'll give us access to the top of the throttle body. So the easiest way I find with the ECU is to have a flat blade screwdriver down the side of the rubbers and just tease the sides of it over the hooks and then you can pull it up out of the way without tearing the mounting rubbers and then lie it out of the way. So we've got all this extra wiring here. It does get a bit tangled in there when you're fiddling around, but you can get enough of it out of the way to, to work in the throttle butterfly there. So we're working here now at the, this is the rubber air pipe from the throttle body into the air box. Major point here is to clean as much dirt away as you can. You don't want any dust or dirt falling down into the butterfly. I use an old toothbrush that I'm finished with. It does a great job. And I'll probably give it a squirt with some brake cleaner or parts cleaner before we go in there. Righto, so you can see the second butterfly just there. An important point is to have, if it's an ignition bike like this 2011, the ignition off. If it's a keyless one, obviously the power switch off. You may choose to disconnect the battery. I've left it connected on this one. Um, but yeah, any adjustments or fiddling around here, you want the power off and do not under any circumstances remove the second butterfly motor. Uh, leave it all in place. It changes position when you remove it and it's very difficult to get back to original. It's not impossible but it's hard and you'll probably need the HST dealer tool to get it exactly right. So yeah, don't remove this secondary butterfly motor at all if you can avoid it. Okay, so from working from inside the throttle body here, you can see that there's a little bit of resistance there. You can carefully push the motor closed and using a Phillips screwdriver undo the two screws. Use a good sharp screwdriver because they are fairly tight. You don't want to strip the head out and not be able to remove them. Now as a safety net, this first primary butterfly is shut, so they can't fall through. I'm fortunate my screwdriver is magnetic. Get that later. <laughs> Keep it in the spare parts bag. Yeah, so as a safety net, the primary butterfly, as long as you don't operate the throttle, will catch the screws if you drop them. And the butter, the secondary butterfly is too big to pass through. It'll be back. <laughs> Righto. And now I grab a pair of... Not those. Long nose, pointy nose pliers. Reach in, grab the edge of the butterfly which wants to tip over. Oops. Not used to doing this one handed. There it is. Tips over on its side. Withdraw it out, and we're done. Now you can see this bike's had a little bit of dust go down and also a couple of little bits of dirt that we missed. I'll put a bit of grease on a screwdriver and pick those up with the tip of the screwdriver before we seal it up again. 
But uh, we did find that there was a small hole in the air filter. So that might be where that dust is from. It's also a mix of oil. So that's the butterfly out. Now it's just a matter of reassembling carefully after we've cleaned out. Righto, so we've put the air horn back through and got it to sit on top of the throttle body. You can see here, as I squeeze it, the top lip there hasn't come through the plastic of the box. So we're just teasing that through. Um, I'll be working from the other side with my other hand and teasing it through and getting the lip to seal so we've got rubber of the air horn on both sides of the plastic housing and then we know it's sealed. Okay, so you can see there that the rubber lip is contacted all the way around. I've been down on the other side and done up the lower hose clamp on the rubber air horn. Now it's just a matter of repacking all of the repacking all of the electrics back into their hidey holes and clipping down the ECU into its hooks. Start on one side first, tuck it in and then just stretch the rubbers. I'll get my flat blade screwdriver when I've got a free hand and actually thumbnails working. Just tease the rubbers over and poke them down on the clips. And that's half, that half done. Um, now some bikes first couple of starts are a little bit rough. But, um, I find it's probably better to push the start button just momentarily and let the motor park do its uh, electronic noise that you always hear when you switch off. Uh, if you do that a couple of times it should settle and start okay.